Now here we have a K28 Type R that's off a DC5 Integra. Here we disassemble the engine and we're actually going to rebuild this. We're going to do a limited class style build. We're going to keep OEM pistons and rods and try to get the maximum effort and the maximum power that we can. We're going to start balancing the pistons that we show here. And of course, all the details. We're going to talk about all the good things or all the things that we could have or possibly get gains from. And of course, talk about what cans we'd run and what intake we'd run. So hey, there's something that definitely would catch your interest. Okay, here we are now. The K20 or this K20 has been actually here for the past few months and we actually started disassembling it as we were finishing the K24 because we used this 50 VTC onto the K24 so we finished that. So here we are pulling the head, inspecting everything that we can and here. And of course, if we see something unusual, we gotta check it with the machine shop. But here it is, as you can see, the block's in pretty good shape except for mileage of course but hey, it's pretty decent so we pulled the pistons in the crank and inspected it and of course did the necessary cleaning so now let's head to the workbench and we start labeling the pistons one two three four all right here we are all the pistons are clean now we remove the carbon all right and before we start checking on the weights we got to label them so that you know we don't mix and match improperly and of course the four Piston pins are up there, and then we're gonna check the balance on that individually. All right, here's the notepad. Okay, keep this in order like this. But yeah, for now, let's talk about one of the features that's different on the K-Series. You can see here, the skirts are narrower. And this on the VW scene or in the VW building world, we call this slipper skirt. You know, it's cause it's more slippery because there's less friction, right? And this is because the Honda alloy for the stock pistons on the K-Series is a lot better than the B-Series and the D-Series. This, I have a feeling, is closer to hyperotectic pistons because the, the stuff is more closer packed. And here you can see on the ITR, on the CTR pistons, you can see even the bottom is still full circle compared to that. Look, so it's narrower. Yep. So of course this is, is less friction and that's definitely more power and more efficiency. All right, now let's get this gram scale. Wait, all right, wait. We label this number one, all right. Sorry for my handwriting skills. All right. it's, it's hard when you know there's a camera or the phone is on recording it. Okay, let's fix this so it looks good. All right, sorry about that being OCD with how I write things because you know, it bothers you when you're building the whole engine the whole time. So, you know, we make sure it's written kind of okay. You know, not really better, but okay. So number three now, all right. Make sure this is a permanent marker so that it doesn't go away. Because you know, we'll be in trouble if we accidentally wipe this off. Okay, it's number four, the last one. Okay, the thing here is, the trick is actually to get all the weight closer to each other than it than it is in stock form. It doesn't have to be like exactly identical. Well, you can if you have time. You know, a lot it will be a lot better. But you know, just closer to how it is than factory is already better. Okay, so we the numbers. All right, now where's the gram scale? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, there. Okay, turn it on, it's digital, well, okay. Sorry about that, it's kind of hard for you guys to see it because it's glaring. It's an LED screen, I think. I think that it is. All right, there, see, no matter how much I try, you can't see it, so sorry. Okay, we tried the piston number one. 
And the thing is, okay, let's let's put it closer. It's gonna shut down in a bit. In a bit. Oh, there you see, it, it automatically shuts off before you know we stop using it or touching it and all that it saves the battery that's why okay now let's start measuring or weighing the pistons okay we have to try it like at least three to four times just to make sure it's accurate and consistent on the weight okay again we keep doing this because you know if you may measure it or weigh it once or twice it might be different from you know the next few times so we try to weigh it as much as we can okay so now it's 339.0 grams all right okay wait now i changed back to 338.8 okay yeah it's 338.8 grams because that's what's been showing for like the early three times and then the last one just changed okay i went back to 338.8 okay there you go now we time lapse the rest but we're gonna show you now here, see? 338.8 grams, all right? Now we go with the number two is 338.5, and then the three is 338.5 again, and then the number four is the lightest one, is 335.2, hmm. So now, to make this easier for you guys, what we do is we get the one, two, and three lighter to mirror or to be accurate or the same as the number four which is 335.2 grams this way it becomes all the same weight with the number four being the lightest that minimizes work and so you don't get lost and like as mentioned before the individual piston pins i weigh them and make sure they're all identical as well as the pistons okay now okay wait Let's start labeling the weights on the piston domes or the dome tops. This way I can trace it or track it whenever I change the weight and get closer to identical. And we'll show you guys that at the end result, of course, no doubt. So all the four pistons are ready to be, you know, weighed in and matched weight for weight on each other. Okay, you can see here, everything is written down properly. Just sir, you know, just show you guys this so that, you know, there's nothing different from the list and the domes, okay? All right, this is the lightest one. So we're gonna catch the one, two, and three to get close to this to minimize material removal. This number four is gonna be like the control piston to get the weight. And here, as I mentioned before or earlier, the four pistons, we're gonna weigh them too. But okay, let's move this here to make space for the rods next. All right, let's move this here. All right. So, okay, now there is space. Now let's go get the connecting rods. Let's go, let's go. Now here we are with the connecting rods. And this is really cool because when you think about it, when you pay attention to the small details, Honda really knows what they're doing because here you can see the big end and the rod beam, they're all the critical points, but as most don't realize, the big end actually holds more weight as far as strength goes and not as much as the beam. So when other people just, you know, worry about bending rods, that's a different story. So here, see, we're gonna polish this beam. You can see the green structure here, it's still, it's, it's not that smooth. So in theory, that could lead to a start of the bending part or where it bends. So here, and you can see, you can see the beam is not that, you know, overly thick, but if you look at the big end, here's the beam. If you look at the big end, it's a lot sturdy. That is because the main problem of a connecting rod is the rod cap or the bottom side tends to move around if the rod bolts are not, you know, properly secure. And that actually be, starts catastrophic failures and here you can actually see traces of that if you look at the mating surface you can see a small some sm sort of chicken trail trail you know with the footsteps and whatnot that's because it's fretting okay you can see here it's all squared up right and now you here you can let me let me get the idr rods that we polished for the bc b project where is it where is it wait 
let me out there okay here you can see here you can see this the beams are polished but honda really knows what they're doing this is an 87.2 stroke crank and you can see the big end is squared up this is more stable right and if you compare to the k20a look it's much the same unlike the b20 but the b20 has a decent big end except it just has a, a thinner looking beam but it's still strong enough as we as we see when we run it here's the bottom side rod cap we're gonna polish that get all the balances good and equal of course giving it more strength and you know durability and less chance for the oil to cling to ruin or you know make the balances variable with different oil clinging to it okay sorry about that all right here you go we balance it for end for end the big end here on the right and the small end on the left that's why you have this stand here we use it for dial gauge but also we use it to hang the rods to the gram scale and then you know weigh each end get all the, the weights accurate and the same and if any of you guys have been wondering if we checked the crankshaft of course we did and also we did a video of it you can check it here it's of an itr crank we show you how to check for the run out and even the end play and of course we have we showed you guys a vw trick on we how you check if there's a crack or a hairline crack on the crankshaft yes it will be in the description below don't worry about it instead of just clicking here up here so hey it's gonna be okay and of course once you get to check that it's also worth watching this video here about the final cleaning before you do the final assembly this is very very important because i've disassembled several engines that's been built by someone else and i can see traces of not clean block or even oil passages that actually mark the bearings or you know scarred the bearings so this is worth checking it'll also be in the description below so hey it's gonna be good for you guys now let's go to the prb head now here is the stock prb head before we start porting it we're gonna show you guys that the setup on this k20a build that we're good to do is gonna be stock rods this race modded of course stock pistons but it'll also run a drag cartel dic drop in cams so it's gonna be really good and of course a spoon ex exhaust and header of course and an ultra street skunk 2 intake manifold so this is gonna work really really good so hey you know and here it is closer the stock form and it's gonna get cleaned up back and forth while we're porting it so it's gonna be a lot cleaner when we're done with it so yes sir okay now let's look closer into the intake ports let's go here here let's go let's go there you can see honda really did a good job with the casting because the design is really good but also the core shift is actually vir virtually almost none look at it so there's not much core shift so aside from valve sizes the port shape here this is far more superior than a b series that is why it makes more power and also you know you guys can check here we did a video of of a prb head we did last year and this is worth checking out so it's gonna be all good stuff in this video and of course when you're done with that you gotta check the rbb k24 head because this one has a bit of history on the video of talking about how we started and all the things that we did for the world time attack competitors that we did years ago so that's gonna be good and of course, this time we're going to make a playlist strictly for K-Series because we've been doing a, quite a few of them here because we also have a B-Series playlist and eventually we realize we got to do a D-Series one because we do a lot of it here on the channel. So this actually would help you guys when you got a binge watch and all the stuff that you want to check out. And of course, that would give you all the good reasons to subscribe and share.